Carrie, you're on mute. We can't hear you. Oh, whoops. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So um, I'm excited that we're all here. Let me just pin my video. There we go. Okay. And start recording. All right. Welcome, everyone. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Today, I'm here to talk about protein. This is a hot topic. I get asked this all the time. Where do you get your protein? How much protein is enough protein? Am I getting enough protein? Um, and so I'm glad that we'll have a resource for these questions. So protein is um, something that is often misconceived as to how much we need. Um, what is it? So first of all, most people don't even know what protein is. So that, let's start with the definition of protein. So protein is actually a building block. It's the main building block that your body uses to repair and maintain body tissues. However, a protein is simply many amino acids linked together. So amino acids are the actual building blocks that you need in order to repair bone, hair, skin, connective tissue, build a human, all of that sequencing of information is amino acids. So something that people don't understand is the amino acids are basically the smaller substances of a protein. There are 20 of them. And so your body can only make 11 of those 20. The other nine are called essential amino acids. Essential amino acids must come from plants. They have to come from plants. They don't come from anywhere else. If you are eating animal tissue, you're just getting what's called a secondhand amino acid. So where does the animal get its protein? The plants, the grass. So when you are, I always say like man eats meat to be strong like an ox and forgets that the ox eats grass, right? So how these really, really super, super strong creatures are eating plants. So these essential amino acids, nine of these essential amino acids must come from a plant source. And when those combine with the 11 that um, our body make, our body is actually able to create and build over 200,000 different protein sequences and functions to support human life and vitality and life force and repair and all of that good stuff. So it is super, super important that you are getting enough quote unquote protein, AKA amino acids from whole food sources. Now, something I want to address is there's all these different theories out there of like, you need one gram per pound of weight, or you need this plus if you're bodybuilding, then you need to add a hundred grams to that. I mean, I have pro athletes come in and they are consuming like 300 grams of protein a day. You know what that is? Really expensive pee. Like, <laughs> really, really expensive pee. And the reason is because your body cannot absorb that. It's impossible. It's absolutely impossible to grab onto that much protein, to absorb it, to utilize it. And so your body is just eliminating it. So on average, your body can absorb eight to 10 grams of protein maximum per hour, maximum. And that is like high efficiency, body working hard. Protein is not easy to process. It is actually very taxing on the body. So I'm going to break down the science behind some of this in just a bit, but eight to 10 grams per hour is the max that your body can absorb in an and in a sitting, it is not recommended to exceed 25 grams of protein on your plate. You will not even be absorbing all 25 of those grams. You will be discarding most of that. So on average, we actually absorb between 11 and 36% of the protein that we eat. It's pretty small. So if you're eating 100 grams of protein a day and you have poor utilization, you are eliminating 89 of those grams. That's a lot of grams. So whether you're taking it in meat protein or extra plant protein, or you're taking whey protein, which is horrible for your body, um, but there, it is a big fat out there like whey is easier, um, easier absorbed and gets into your system faster and helps you build and all this stuff. Um, and this is where I'm going to go next about, it's about chemistry. 
everything is chemistry. You want to look at the science. You don't want to look at the macros. So we have gotten to become a, a macro focused society where we're like, this one's protein, this one's fat, this many calories, this is this. And it's not, that actually is um, not an efficient way to look at the human body. The human body is chemistry. We are a hundred trillion cells in two fluids. We have a blood system and we have a lymphatic system and the blood feeds our glands and our organs and the lymph cleans our glands and the organs. And then the protein purpose or the amino acids help rebuild and repair structure, bone, tissue, and create those functions. Any excess protein gets dumped into the lymphatic system. So this sewer system, all of the fluid that's interstitial, intertissue in between all of your, your cells is lymph fluid. So when we have all this extra protein, in the body, it starts being dumped into the lymph fluid. And so we, our lymph system becomes like a sewer system. It gets backed up. And then the lymph system's job is to bring all of that extra protein. It's like, what do we do with all this protein? And it brings it to the kidneys and the kidneys just pee it out through the urine. So one sign that you have way, way, way too much protein, this is like, you're way over the edge. Like way, like you're going towards dialysis over the edge is you have bubbly urine. If there are bubbles in your urine, your body has, you are consuming an insane amount of protein that you cannot process. So that is something to be paying close attention to. If whoever brought you to this call, contact them if that's happening to you, because it's serious. Now, number two, the average amount of protein that our body can actually absorb, like I mentioned, is eight to 10 grams per hour at maximum, not recommended to exceed 20 to 25 grams of protein per meal. Um, the body, generally speaking, is only needing, so you can calculate this out for you, 0.36 grams of protein per pound of weight to maintain connective tissue, bone structure, bodily functions. So if you do the math, say you're about 20, 120 pounds, 0.36 grams, it's about 46 grams of protein a day. It's not a whole lot. The average person needs somewhere in between 40 to 60 grams of protein a day in order to continue to thrive and to build. Now, the concept in bodybuilders or the concept in people that are trying to put on weight or bulk up is if I have more, more is better right? We always think more is better. More equals more, right? No, more oftentimes equals less in this specific scenario. So when you are consuming, say 50 grams of protein in one meal, your body's grabbing onto 10. Your, your muscles don't say like, oh, look at all this extra protein. We're going to build more because we have so much stuff to it we can do. Your body says, I cannot absorb this protein. You need to go out here. And it actually causes your body a lot of fatigue and a lot of stress. So the more protein that you have in the body is directly correlated to hypertension and inflamed kidneys. So high protein diets, high blood pressure all the time, all the time and relates to kidney stones, um, inflammation throughout the body, lots of brain fog, it can cause weight gain. Um, when you're in ketosis, it's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother talk. Um, but the excess protein can actually cause a lot of inflammation and a lot of stress on your kidneys because your kidneys are trying to eliminate all this excess stuff. It's like when you are trying to fill a water pitcher and it's full, you don't just keep filling it because you're like, well, it'll get more full. Well, no, it can only get so full. Can't, can't, you can't feel it anymore. It's not the water pressure doesn't start growing, it's full. So we have to really understand that more does not equal more, more equals less in this situation. Now I wanna talk about the chemistry of protein as well. Um, so before I do that, it is possible to eat too much protein like I've discussed. And if more than 35, so this is a pretty generous ratio, if more than 35% of your daily caloric intake or your daily intake, whatever you're, whatever you're taking in, if more than 35% of that is protein-based, you are actually at a significantly higher risk of hypertension and disease. So this is statistically proven that um, it can worsen kidney problems and over time cause things like bad breath, indigestion, dehydration, acidosis, lymphedema, and more. So proteins are highly acidic. And this is something that I want you people to understand about chemistry. 
So there's two sides to chemistry. There's base and there's acid. There's acids and there's bases. So the acidics are very corrosive and dehydrating and the bases and the alkalins are very hydrating and healing and they, they put the fire out, they're cooling. So proteins are proton rich. For there's protons and electrons, right? So we've talked about this. Electrons, this electromagnetic communication system that we have within our body, electrons are very alkaline. They restore electrolytes in the body. Protons are acidic. They're more the proteins and they leave behind nitrogen, in, uh, nitrogen ash in the body. So they're an acid ash. The alkaline, the chemistry is very acid base and it actually requires the body to steal electrons in order to balance itself out. So the more protein you eat, the more electrons you're going to be dehydrating. So you will actually be aging your skin. You'll be aging your body by excess protein consumption because your body is like, I need electrons, I need electrons, right? It's trying to put out the fire. Your body, 100% of the time, your blood pH cannot vary from 7.4. That is where it has to stay at all times. Your cells cannot get lower than 6.8 or you have cancer. So when your cells start to deplete like that, you have cell death or death. And so this is the chemistry game the body is playing 100% of the time. Anytime you eat something, drink something, breathe something, put something on your skin, your body's like, what's that chemistry? What's that chemistry? Oh, that's too hot. I got to do this. I got to put out that fire. Your body is amazing. But if you wake up every day and you're like, I'm gonna have a cup of coffee and a steak sandwich, holy acid trauma fire to your body. So that is acid on top of acid, on top of acid, on top of excess protein waste. So now our body has to buffer acids. How do we buffer acids? We borrow electrons. We borrow electrolytes. We borrow all hydration from the cell. So your body will use four things when it's trying to balance acidosis. Water, calcium, cholesterol, or fat. Equal opportunity in some people. Some people don't really gain fat. They lose a lot of calcium. These people have kidney stones a lot. Um, kidney stones are a very common part of a too high acid-based protein-rich diet. Those, that means your body has been borrowing calcium from your connective tissue. It's like, okay, we have too much acid. I'm going to take it from her skin. Oh, we have too much, we have too much protein in here. I got to put this acid fire out. I'm going to borrow it from her bones. So these are, this very, very important that we are not consuming too much protein. So this protein craze makes me crazy for real. So I'm going to share my screen with you and I want to share, let's see if I can find it. Um, let me pull it up. I'm going to share a document that I share um, with my clientele in the clinic. Here it is. And let me see if my screen can grab onto it. Yep, right here. Okay. So this is called understanding proteins. So foods that have a high concentrate and complex structure of amino acids are what we call proteins. So this is like a breakdown, but these amino acids group together. They make like a many amino acids group together to make a protein structure. The body can actually only recognize the amino acid. That's all it uses. The body, when it looks at this big complex protein chain, it's like, whoa, what's all that? I can use that. I can use that. You go, you go, you go, you go. So it just takes out the amino acids. It kicks the rest into the lymph system. And then when we consume proteins like animal flesh, nuts, like nuts are actually more acidic on your body. Certain beans are more acidic. Um, these get grouped together and sequenced into the, the body basically will take the amino acids that amino acids that it needs and then discard the rest. But this will be nitrogen rich. So that nitrogen rich is that high acid chemistry that's proton dominant, that's going to make your body steal electrons. It requires a ton of energy from your body. And that's something that um, people don't understand. Your food should be fuel. You should feel like after you eat something, you should be like, all right, I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's get on with the day. I feel good. When you are taking a nap after your meal, your food caused more fatigue than it caused for fuel. So you lost more energy than you gained through the digestive process that is taking place in your body. It is not like, oh, my body's just tired, I wanna relax. No, when you lose all motivation after a meal, you ate the wrong food. 
So this last part just talks about, um, it's important to take note that the body does not burn amino acids for energy. This is really important. That would be like burning the walls of your cabin in the fireplace, like a little stupid, because then you won't have a cabin. Um, so your body uses carbon for energy. So carbohydrates and oxygen. So carbon and oxygen are our main sources of energy. So Cellular ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is achieved by either a glucose molecule or a fructose molecule attaching to oxygen, and that equals ATP. That is energy for your cells. So where do we get glucose and fructose? Fruits and veggies. And here's the great thing, is that your all of your fruits and vegetables um, are made up of amino acids. So this gives them their structure. If they, if they didn't, if they didn't have amino acids, they wouldn't have a structure. And these amino acids are really simple. They're really easy for your body to digest and ding, 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 they leave behind an alkaline ash. So they leave behind a very cooling, healing, hydrating environment of calcium, magnesium, and sodium. This is awesome for your body. So um, when you look at health and we look at all of the issues, almost all of the issues basically are on the acid side of the fence. So when we are in acidosis, we have inflammation, we have chronic fatigue, we have brain fog, we have overgrowth of bad bacteria, we have dis-ease, we have hypertension, we have diabetes, we have all these things. This is too many acids in the body, too much protein, too much meat, too much acid-based chemistry. So when you look at the food spectrum, you need to look at the chemistry of foods. And so I talk all the time, there's a chat on my um, YouTube about eating right for your species type. We are a human, which means that we are the closest to a primate, which means that we are technically the closest to a frugivore species, which blew my mind when I learned that because I was like, oh, like fruit, sugar, can't eat fruit, it's bad for you. Because that's what I learned in college. That's what I learned in my undergrad to dietetics and nutrition science. That's what I learned in my master's in holistic nutrition, even that we really had to watch our fruits, fruits were sugar. You needed to focus on your macros, food pyramid, yada, yada, yada. So most of your nutritional counselors that are out there, somebody that's gone and taken a nutrition coaching program, or they've done this, they are very focused on macros and we need to be very focused on chemistry not on macros. We need to look at the chemistry of foods, the chemistry of thoughts, the chemistry of activities that we um, are engaging in, and that will reflect the exact lifestyle in our life. So when we go out and we think, okay, well, I was taught you need to have this much protein, this much carbs, this much net carbs, this much, you know, how much fiber does it have? Deduct the fiber out of there, and that's your net carbs. Like, this is what we learn in school. And so you've got a million bajillion people running around telling you to get your protein, but nobody actually really knows what that means. Nobody actually knows how much or most common, you know, when people say like, oh, do you, how much, or how do you get your protein? I say, how much protein do you need in a day? And they don't know that answer. And so we have to really question things and look at things in a different perspective. So I was a protein crazed girl, admit it. I was like on protein powder. I didn't have any fruit. I was drinking three protein powder shakes a day with spinach and water because I didn't want the extra fruit calories, like none of it. And I was so miserable. I was overweight. I had the worst brain fog of my life. This was right when I was diagnosed with autoimmune disease. My feet felt like glass. I couldn't poop to save my life. It was awful because I was so acidic and my body just kept borrowing more and more alkaline chemistry to balance out the acid I was putting in. Even though it was plant protein, it was an over base protein and it wasn't organic and it has heavy metals and it has glyphosate and all those things in it. So we really need to focus on getting our amino acids from whole food sources that grow from the earth. So that's what I wanted to talk about today is how much protein do you need? On average, you can, you can absorb maximum eight to 10 grams in one sitting in an hour. You need 0.36 grams per one pound of weight. So if you're on 120 pounds, it's about 43 to 46 grams, somewhere around there, if my math's right in my brain. Um, at maximum, or sorry, at minimum for your body function, maximum really over that, about F, over 60 grams in a day, you're really just peeing it all out, adding more inflammation and more stress to your body. And number three, if you get those proteins, 
quote unquote, from whole food amino acid sources, your body's going to be able to utilize them much easier. And it's going to be able to eliminate the excess without causing harm and inflammation to your body. So eggs are not a good source of protein. Meat is not a good source of protein. Eggs are actually the number one mucus forming food on the planet. They feed viruses, they feed parasites, they congest the lymph system, they cause a lot of mucus in your sinuses and your throat. Um, and when you get these acid-based foods that are forming mucus in the body out, you start to feel that vibrancy again. You start to feel clarity and life force and like, oh, I remembered where I put my keys, you know, just like li the little things that we think is like getting old or mom brain, or I, I don't get enough sleep. It's common, but not normal. And it's all because we've been taught wrong for so long. So if you can do anything for yourself, it's the art of unlearning. And that is the best thing I ever accomplished is you know, it was very hard going through six years of mainstream education, thinking I knew what was up and having to unlearn it all and just be humble and try something new because what I was doing wasn't working. So in this call, thank you so much for coming here. Whoever brought you to this call is connected into our regenerative health community. They're a regenerative health coach on our team, and they are extremely passionate about all things wellness because it's changed their lives and rocked their worlds. So this is really powerful to, to go back to the person that brought you here because we actually work with things that are coming from whole food sources always. And I want to make note of one last thing. We, are, we do have to get our amino acids from plants. That's the only source that they come from. And here's what's scary. And I learned this a little over two years ago, like maybe two and a half years ago, I started studying with Dr. Zach Bush and I started studying soil health. And soil health is directly connected to human health. They're one. And so if you look at the state of our soil and you look at the state of humans, you're like, mm, yep, they're one. There's duality. Like one's crap and the other's crap. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead and watch Kiss the Ground on Netflix. Um, super, super amazing, amazing, amazing documentary. But we'll open your eyes and you will get it. It will click for you. Um, but my long way of saying this is that our soil is very depleted due to fast farming fast farming, chemical farming, herbicide, pesticide farming, and even the fast farming, even if it's organic, we're finding that the plants do not have their essential amino acids in them. They have two or four, and that is very alarming. And this is one of the biggest reasons for miscarriage, um, for just like that brain clarity, like things just not functioning properly in your body. And it's because your body doesn't have all the information it needs to repair. It's like trying to write a sentence while you're missing letters of the alphabet. You take out enough vowels and you're screwing up thousands of words. And so this is really, really important that you are getting your essential amino acids. And so when I learned that plants didn't have them, like they didn't have the nine that we need anymore, I was like, ah, what's the solution? I can't open a farm. I have a mom and I own a clinic and I'm so busy. And I kind of went on this meltdown spiral. And then I began looking for a solution and I found that solution. And I cannot be more grateful that I have that solution since that day. Two and a half years ago, I was losing hair. My skin was elasticity was not, not going great. Let's put it that way. And I have reversed age in the last two and a half years. And I will continue to reverse age because I just had two babies back to back and I've nursed both of them. I've been pregnant or nursing for four years. And that demands a ton out of your body. So when we lose connective tissue, the reason is, is number one, we don't have essential mineralization in our body because your minerals make calcium. And number two, you're burning through minerals and nutrients faster than your body can repair the exterior of your skin. So we have to be getting these sources from somewhere else. So we work with organic, plant-based, sprouted and wind-dried amino acids that are incredible. So they are condensed into a capsule because it has all of your essential amino acids and they are absorbed. 99.9% .9 of them are absorbed into the tissues of your body. So they don't actually have to go and they bypass the liver and the kidneys and add all that stress to the body. And then you have all this excess protein in the lymph system. They're actually all bioavailable, absorbed by the body, not adding extra stress or excess waste, which is phenomenal. So pregnant nursing moms, I recommend at least 10 a day. 
um, changed my life, changed my brain health, changed everything, my muscle, fat burning ability, all of it. So we work with plant-based aminos and superfoods and micronutrients that are grown in regenerative agriculture practices, which means they are nutrient dense, they have their minerals, they are never heated, they are all organic, they are non-GMO, they will rock your world. So I would say go check in with the person that brought you to this call and come learn more about our program. So our website is www.regenerateyourhealth.com and you can just play around. There's an unlimited amount of resources there. We have everything from 30 day health resets to like, hey, it's the holidays. I don't wanna reset right now. Let me get my foundational nutrients. So the core four plus immune is one of my favorite things that we have. It's our foundational core nutrition plus our immune support, all organic, all from whole foods, all of the time. When you have stuff that comes from isolates, it releases free radicals in your body. So I never recommend going out and buying an amino acid powder that's coming from an isolate form that's not coming from a whole food that's made in a lab. So like if you have an amino acid and they're isolating that out of the bean, it's different versus making something lab made. So we won't get into all that chemistry, but just hook up with the person that brought you here. We're excited and happy to support you to be healthy in your body. We have an amazing reset that's going to be coming up um, in January, of course. But right now we're supporting people to stay healthy through the winter with our foundational nutrition supports. So thank you so much for taking the time to be here. I'm going to stop recording and then I'm going to open up if anybody has any questions. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Chris. I have a question for you. This is my college roommate, Jane, who's on with me today. And awesome. Jane has been working with functional medicine for a couple years and doing some healing like mm -hmm. I was doing, but can't fully get to the end game. And we've been talking about the amino acids and all the things you just ended with. But um, I just want her to give you a couple little things that are sort of still going on and see where you see the ties, what might be missing and what she might need to kind of fill in the gaps. Yeah. Hey. Can, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a history. Um, don't want to get too evolved or involved into it, but um, working through functional medicine, working on my microbiome, have done a couple of the Genova diagnostics, fecal stools, so see really bad dysbiosis, was uh, bad. Uh, so been working on liver, um, liver drainage, um, just kind of cleaning up the microbiome. And what's kind of happened in the second one is we're definitely seeing SIBO, and now I definitely have a parasite. So I've started a SIBO, um, this candy uh protocol with a, a, a parasite protocol. And I'm not, you know, she's thinking probably two to three months of it. And I don't know what else to maybe add or do. Um, what you think about, I, I guess my end game, ultimately my end game is no colon polyps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is um, frustratingly simple. It takes diligence, but it is simple. Like it takes work, but it is a simple process, if that makes sense. And that's the other thing I forgot to mention about proteins. Not only does it leave behind an acid ash, but it is one of the main causes of overgrowth of bad bacteria. Our bodies are not set up to break down animal protein. Our saliva is not set up to do it. We actually don't have any, we don't have uric acid in our saliva. We don't have uracrase like carnivores do. We actually have a very alkaline saliva that has pitalin and breaks down fruits and vegetables. So we actually don't have the ability to actually even digest meat properly. So what that does is it, leads, it leaves it up to the pancreas to producing excess amounts of hydrochloric acid releasing pepsin and the stomach acid. So then our body can't keep up and those organs start to get fatigued. And so our body ferments the food. So an average meat-based meal takes 17 hours to clear the small bowel and 72 hours to clear the colon. Mm -hmm. So it's like your body can't recover and there's, there's fermentation and it's contributing to the, to the unhealthy bacteria in your body. So anytime somebody's trying to get rid of SIBO or they're trying to get rid of anything like that, 
I say, d go all plants, dig in, don't look back. You can have your meat back later, find it in balance. You know, 80, 20 is the balance I recommend living in 80% of the time, do what's great for you. 20% of the time, pick your poison. Um, but it, you know, it's really, really, really important that you are alkaline plant cleaning up the mess because the bacteria of the foods that you eat are going to either populate or depopulate based on what you're feeding. So, um, when you have plant like amino acids from plants, it actually helps build T cells, which are your fighter cells. And it strengthens your immunity. It strengthens your, it reduces your ability to get autoimmunity. And it also decreases candida bacteria. When you eat things that require parasitic activity. So when you have certain foods, um, hold on one second, Aslan. We love those things digging. Um, but when you have foods that require fermentation process and excess protein waste, that's going to be discarded into the lymph system. It requires fungal and parasitic activity. That's the entire reason that we get overgrowth of bacteria is we actually need it. We need it to clean up the mess. So, you know, you have, we have over, we have hundred trillion cells, like I explained, but we have 10 times more bacteria than we have cells. Don't worry, Kelly, I'll get this whole thing. Don't worry. Um, people are like, I wish this whole thing was on the recording. I'll make that happen. Don't worry. I've got a, a good tech guy over here. Um, so we have, we have 10 times more bacteria than we have cells and each of those bacteria have a role. So their job is to start cleaning up the mess. So if you have like a little handful of candida bacteria, their job is to go clean up excess waste. Well, if there's a ton of waste, it needs to keep cleaning and keep cleaning and keep cleaning and keep cleaning. So it's like, well, I got now instead of I, it's like flying in six guys. Okay, this is a bigger war than we thought. We need 30 more. Okay, we need 100 more, right? So it's going to keep multiplying to clean up the job that you give it. So when you're dealing with SIBO, a bacterial overgrowth, you got to starve the bacteria out. You have to stop feeding it. You can't just kind of stop feeding it. You have to stop feeding it. I like to use the analogy of like a mouse, like one little morsel of food on the floor and they're good for a day, right? <laughs> I got to get these guys out of here. So you just have to do the work. You have to be diligent. I recommend lots of herbs. Um, the candibactin herbs, you know, if you look on the bottom of them, there's monosodium crystallate, there's steric acid, there's a bunch of fillers in there. So be careful on the ones that you're taking with candibactin. I've helped a lot of people that are using candibactin through functional medicine doctors and we get them off of it. We get them on our programs and they heal in real time, like really, really, really fast. Okay. Um, I don't know if someone's on this call. Jess, are you on this call? I don't know. I think she's in the clinic. She's not. She has a powerful story of being on all the things, working with functional medicine doctor. She was on candibactin. She was on all that stuff. Um, and she was not getting anywhere. And she's like, I just can't get to the other side. And she started our programs and um, dropped all that off. And she's like rocking. I'm like, she couldn't walk up the stairs from her basement without being just exhausted. Like couldn't hold her head up, was so tired. And now she's working at my clinic and <laughs> she's just rocking life. So we have a lot of success stories here. We're happy to help you through it. But I would say um, in your specific case, uh, can you please close that? It keeps beeping. Thank you. In your specific case, um, I would highly recommend, you know, I, I would like, want to know a little bit more about your diet, but I would say for sure, are you all tea or a form of it, either the grain free or the regular, um, and the be energetic to support your adrenals. Anytime you're dealing with an overgrowth of fungus or bacteria, it's due to adrenal fatigue. And that also is how you have poor sugar metabolism or carbohydrate metabolism. And so, um, I would do that. And then the fulvic zeolites to draw out any metals or sulfur drugs that are stuck in the interstitial tissue of your belly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, antibiotics, pharmaceuticals, sulfur drugs leave behind sulfa and they leave behind, they'll actually in the iris, it'll look orange. And, um, this breeds an environment for fungus and SIBO, and it's, a, it makes a very friendly environment for it. So you have to get this stuff out of the interstitial tissue of the GI or the environment will continue to come back until you get to the root. Um, so that's what I would recommend And our biomedic is scientifically proven and third-party tested to get glyphosate out of the bowels. So 
I would get the glyphosate out. I would get the metals out. I would start working on that kind of stuff um, right away and support your adrenal glands. But I just dig in and don't look back. Okay, great. Thank, thank you, Gary. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for being on here. Okay. Um, anybody else with questions? Lindsay, Gary, I have a question. Oh, sorry. Sorry, one second. We'll have Lindsay Scott go and then, and then whoever that was that was talking next. All right, thanks so much. Hi, everyone. I'm Carrie. I'm here on behalf of um, someone that I'm working with, and she's been on a protocol for about a month and a half. And actually, today she messaged me saying that she thinks she's having kidney stones. So, can you talk about those a little bit? Because you just mentioned them with um, too much protein, and maybe any recommendations so that I can help guide her through um, in the current moment? Well, I mean, kidney stones is if your your body uses calcium to buffer acid. So what's your diet like? Is she on an all plant diet? What's happening? Um, if in, when your body starts to detox, it can be common to actually get kidney stones because your body starts to pull out the extra calcium deposits that are in the body. And so it's bringing them to the kidneys to be eliminated. So it's not necessarily bad. It can be part of a healing crisis. Now, once she passes these kidney stones, if she continues to get kidney stones, then we have a deeper issue and you got to look at the parathyroid gland. So I, I would right, thank say, you so much. Yeah. Helpful. And she can temporarily stop taking the amino acids if that's of concern. Oh, correct. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, who is next? Um, it was me. This is Tierra Carey. So I've got a question, um, protein related. So my husband, anytime we've tried to do any sort of a fast, like we frequently would do like the Daniel fast or something of that nature within like four or five days of no, um, plant-based protein, I'm sorry, not plant-based protein, like, um, meat based protein, my husband will drop 10 pounds and he looks kind of sick. <laughs> and so I'm just trying to figure out how to help him transition because, we're dealing with like texture issues and stuff when it comes to um, beans or just other things that I, I'm aware of that he could try. I was just wanting some other options for him. Yeah, so weight is nothing more than waste. Don't be afraid of that weight loss initially. Your body will rebuild and repair. So when you have excess weight, you have excess waste in the system. And when your body is cleaning, so when you got off of the animal protein, what your body did was say, yay, we can stop being swollen now. Most of the weight that he's losing is water weight and excess waste that's surrounding the cells and suffocating the function of his tissues and cells. So your body will eliminate that. And the body will only eliminate that which is damaged or destroyed and does no, is no longer supporting life. So your body is not break, he's not breaking down his muscle tissue. His body's not eating his muscle tissue. Go watch Game Changers, incredible documentary. These people are pro athletes, they're Olympians, they're plant-based, they're vegan, they're beasts, you know? But they all go through a breakdown piece first. So you gotta break down before you build up. It's like, you don't start to build on a crumbled foundation. You tear the whole house down, you start over, you build a foundation. So I would not be afraid of that initial weight loss. You will plateau and you will gain again. So the body is getting rid of inflammation, mucus, acidity, um, damaged tissue, and then it starts to repair and rebuild on strong, healthy tissue. So I know that doesn't really, um, answer like how you're not going to lose the weight because you're probably just going to lose the weight to be fully honest, but you can replace things. You can do sweet potatoes. You can do chickpeas. Like one of my favorite recipes for our kids is we just take organic chickpeas and again, throw them in, um, a pan and we use a potato masher and we just mash them and add taco seasonings to them like cumin and coriander and pink salt and garlic. And then that is the meat for tacos or lettuce wraps or coconut flour tortillas with guacamole and we make a cilantro verde sauce. There are so many ways to eat amazing food, to be getting more than enough protein. Um, you're, and like we learned on this, too much protein is not good for us. It creates lymphatic acidosis and inflammation. Thank you so much. That, I, that made me feel better <laughs> um, just hearing that. Um, and I'm going to definitely share that with him. And we're going to watch Game Changers probably tonight.
Yay. Yeah. So my favorite documentaries is um, our game changers. Um, what, what the health is a really good one. So game changers, what the health, I definitely watch Kiss the Ground and Food Matters. Um, those are some of my faves. Fat, sick, and nearly dead is good too. You'll go on a bender, you guys. <laughs> You're gonna go down a rabbit hole. All right, I, did we get everybody? I'm gonna go ahead and close us out. Thanks everybody on Facebook for watching. You're welcome to share this with somebody if you feel like it would be beneficial to them. And um, we're always looking to grow and to share our mission with the world. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of people out there hurting. So let's help them out. Let me stop the, I'm going to stop our stream.